Hello, my name is Jean Ross. I'm an Associate Professor at Otago Polytechnic, Dunedin, New Zealand, and I work in the School of Nursing. And I'm just um, going to introduce the international collaboration that Otago Polytechnic strives for to have relationships with external um, stakeholders um, in many different spheres um, around the world. Um, one, of, one of the ideas is to bring students from other countries to um, Otago Polytechnic and vice versa to collaborate and send some of our students to different countries in educational institutions. Our mission for that is to collaborate, to understand, to share and to evolve our research endeavours and our community work. Thank you. So, I'm Samuel Mann, Professor at Otago Polytech in Dunedin, New Zealand. In 2008, the Polytech decided that every graduate may think and act as a sustainable practitioner was one of our core, uh, core goals, and it was my job then to, to make it happen. So I worked with all of the departments um, to see what does it really mean to be a, a sustainable practitioner. And one of the things that we decided is that it wasn't about uh, giving people a, a set of these are the rules you need to follow. It was about them going on a journey of working out for themselves what does that mean actually mean. And we, we've done that and it's still there. If we look at the back of our business card, it's still there as our mission. Our people make a better world is the, the, the core of what we're doing uh, here at the Polytech. So it's worth thinking about what does sustainable mean. We're very much talking about uh, long term. We're not talking about uh, just the, the sort of the, the, the short term uh, things that that we might do and think, well, that's a little bit longer than what it normally is, but it's, it's really about thinking in a, in a bigger way, thinking, well, I've got this decision that I'm making, but if I expand it in space and time, what does it think? One of my favorite definitions of sustainability is ethics expanded in space and time. So if we think about how do these things apply in a very much uh, wider uh, perspective. One of the things I've been working on recently is the transformation mindset. Um, what does it mean to, to go beyond that? Well, I've done the recycling. What's, what do I do next? What, what are the things that we, we want to do uh, next? So one of the things that, on that is to be thinking in terms of a, what I like to, to, to use the term socio-ecological. Socio um, so we're used to thinking about uh, um, socio-economic. It's a term that we just think is a, is a, is a thing. But people created that term, so, so other people have created the term socio-ecological. So if you think about that in terms of the, the, the system, um, one of my uh, pet uh, dislikes is the Venn diagram of sustainability, that notion of that you've got the, the three circles of, of sustainability. And it was, a, it was a genius move when they created it because it put sustainability on the intersection of the, the environment, the, the economy and, and society. But the danger of it is that people split them apart. People split those things apart and then they start talking about environmental sustainability as if it's not connected to the, to the other bits. Um, so I'd like to be, encourage people to be thinking about a much more holistic view um, where everything is working together. I developed Many years ago, the notion of community development research projects here at Otago Polytechnic with the student nurses. It started off very small and it has grown to be a very large endeavour. So we started off, when I say small, we had um, maybe two or three projects we undertook each year with the third year nurse learners in the Bachelor of Nursing programme. That grew to now um, 110 nurse learners in the year three Bachelor of Nursing programme um, engage with community development research projects. What that means is we divide them up generally into groups of 10, so that could be anything between 10 and 12 projects, substantial projects that we are undertaking here at Otago Polytechnic. What it means is that the students work in geographical locations that are assigned to the student, generally in rural areas. Dunedin sits within a large geographical location, much of which is um, rural and isolated populations. Um, what we like to do, we like to work alongside and with community 
to, um, to discuss what um, they seek as their health needs and the students then work on those health needs to um, come up with health promotion message and resources that students have um, developed. We then go back and look at the impact that that has had on students. One wonderful example is last year's um, students worked in a location and they developed um, beer stubbies which keeps your beer or your cokes co cool in the summer. Um, the message that they were working with with the population they identified were, was the mental health of farmers. Um, down here in the south or the South Island in, in, in New Zealand, there is a, a well-known notion that, um, that of the southern man, which is the man that, um, that has a, um, a very um, rugged life, um, works with dogs, works on the farm and is a tough and drinks spates beer. And so the idea was that they wanted to improve the communication of farmers because the suicide rate of farmers and the mental health conditions is very large in, in New Zealand. They developed a health promotion message, they um, put it on a stubby and that stubby was shared amongst the community. One person spoke to another person um, and uh, what happened was that um, there was a, a national campaign called Will to Live um, occurring in, a, in the town called Balclutha and they contacted us and they asked would we sponsor 200 of these stubbies to be given to each of the farmers that would be attending. Not only did we do that, but we were asked to, we were invited as well. So we attended the evening, we presented the stubbies each of the farmers loved them and now it has gone national. So the organisation Will to Live have now purchased 1,000 of these stubbies to go around New Zealand spreading the message. That's what we believe is part of nursing practice, making a difference, but also about the sustainability and being sustainable in our society. Thank you. My role at Otago Polytechnic includes raising awareness of the uh, research that is undertaken here by our staff and by our students. And I've really enjoyed listening to the nursing students present their research projects. And many of those I have written up for publication in our monthly Relevant Research e-magazine. And those stories are all gathered together on our website. So on one web page you can see a good cross-section of the type of work that they have been doing. It gives a really good overview of their work. A lot of the research that we undertake here at Otago Polytechnic is in the area of health um, with different disciplines including nursing. And so we realised that there was a gap between the, for the dissemination of our research between the relevant research e-magazine on the one hand, the short pieces that I write for that, and the longer research articles that are published in academic journals. So we decided to start a blog. So the blog is a promoting discourse um, about the professional practice in health disciplines and also about health education. You can find that blog online at healthdiscourse.nz and we really encourage new submissions and posts for that blog and also comments and feedback discussion on the posts that are already online. Hi there, um, I'm Keith Whidden. Uh, I live in Bishop's Castle up in the Shropshire Hills, beautiful part of the world. Um, I'm nowadays a musician uh, and I have been called a community activist here in Bishop's Castle. So I've lived here um, about six years now. Um, previously, before that, I was living in Sussex. I originally studied as a geographer uh, and uh, I was a teacher for, for several years. Uh, I then became a local authority school inspector and advisor. But like a lot of people in that profession, uh, I was made redundant about um, seven years ago or so. So uh, faced with the decision of what to do, decided on a lifestyle change, uh, wanted to find somewhere where I could be part of a, a real community uh, and play music, have a different way of life and chose Bishop's, Bishop's Castle. I'm very glad I did too. So uh, Jean Ross is my cousin. Um, we share, uh, shared an inspiring grandmother. Um, she was born in Cornwall. Uh, she married and was widowed in Dublin and then brought up her family in Anglesey. Um, had a very hard life and that was just an amazing woman. Uh, I think she inspired Jean and I very much. And um, to be honest, we're very like-minded and um, don't tell her I said this, but I think of her as a sister really, to be fair. 
So last year, uh, Jean invited me to go and visit uh, Iceland, where her son uh, was playing ice hockey for New Zealand in an international tournament. Um, and we got chatting on the plane and it was pretty quick that we realised we, we shared some of the same interests in, in the, the idea of community development, the idea of a sense of place. Um, and so we got talking and um, in the end, Jean asked me to write a paper based on Bishop's Castle for Otago Polytechnic Scope Journal. And the paper I wrote was called Maintaining the Health of a Rural Community by Working Towards Resilience and Sustainability. Um, and I wrote it as a case study of, of this amazing little community that we have here in Bishop's Castle. Um, so we also thought about it and thought, well, Bishop's Castle could become uh, part of the Chase model uh, and become a focus for New Zealand student nurses to study community health in a place that they didn't particularly know. So uh, a little bit about Bishop's Castle itself. Um, yeah, it's a tiny little town, um, only about 1,800 people, um, one of the smallest towns in, in the UK. It's very remote. Um, we're up in the hills here um, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's a real tourist trap. So although it only has 1,800 residents, um, for most of the year, the population is quite a lot bigger with, with visitors and, and it supports the surrounding area right slap bang on the Welsh border it's a very historic area it's um, a very early settlement medieval um, a large number of very historic buildings um, and um, people are very proud of it it's a beautiful place um, so it's um, also got a very very strong community and the community here I don't know perhaps it's because we're very remote we pull together and we've got a strong pride in our town uh, and we want to keep it beautiful and we want to keep the community healthy uh, and on the other side of that we also have six pubs and two breweries so it's it's um, it's pretty good um it's a very musical town it's full of artists it's very colorful we've got painted houses it's it's slightly wacky and really nice um so for myself um i chair the bishop's castle community partnership which is um a group of volunteers uh, and we work with the town council to look at the long-term strategy for the town. We see it as a sort of an umbrella group, trying to sort of pull together what everyone's doing in the town. So if someone's going for a bid for something, we know about it so that we don't all tread on one another's toes. So uh, with regards to the Chase project, we've pulled together, uh, I think, an amazing little team of uh, community volunteers. We have on that team uh, Dr. Adrian Penny. He's the doctor in charge of the Bishop's Castle Medical Practice. And actually, he also practiced in New Zealand near Otago um, some years back. So very interested in the project. Uh, we have Anne Roberts. Anne uh, has served on the town council and she takes people walking for health, which is a, a lovely thing to do. We've got Valerie Woodman say, and Valerie is uh, working on a project with Anne actually to uh, try and uh, make Bishop's Castle a dementia friendly town. Very important. As I say, we have quite a number of uh, older people here. We have Hope Robson, who's um, a young uh, independent living coordinator, and she's also a therapist. So she sort of represents, represents the young people on this team. We have Daphne Ducrow. Daphne is Canadian, has lived in Bishop's Castle about two years, uh, came up with her husband from London. Daphne has just uh, written her thesis on local food production. She's opened uh, a market garden here in town and she supplies all of us with wonderful fresh vegetables as well as the, uh, the restaurants and cafes and so on. And the aim is to try and see how we can bring local food to the population here to improve their health, but also to, to make it more affordable for local people. Uh, and then also we have Bernard Edwards and Bernard is, is, has lived in the town all his life. Um, he's an absolute expert on everything that goes on in the town. So, of course, Bernard's on the team. Um, and I'd just like to take this occasion to thank that team because they've jumped into this project with absolute enthusiasm. They think it's a fantastic project and they've been answering some amazing questions from the students um, over the last three weeks. So we have met the students online via video, conf video conferencing already. Uh, it, was a, it was a really good evening, actually. We spent about an hour and a half chatting away. And I think we've all been really impressed by how quickly um, they've picked up the, the real difficult issues that a little town like ours has. And some of those issues we've thought about, really, and they're quite hidden issues. So 
by reflecting those issues back to us that's really important because i think a lot of people in the community won't realize that they are issues so we're really looking forward to wednesday evening when we um have an open meeting we're bringing as many people from the community that want to come to have our final video conference with the students and hear what their final presentation is and what they found out and and we're really looking forward to it and hopefully we can act on on those uh, things that they found because I'm sure they found things which we know are very important and need action. So it's been an exciting project and thank you very much for letting us be part of it. Bye. Together with two other colleagues, we developed what's called the CHASE model. Um, that was to assist students to be able to undertake a community um, profile and assessment of, of a community they'd been identified to work within to improve health and the sustainability of that community. The CHASE model includes community, health, assessment, sustainable education model. So the students are assigned to a community. Their mission is to look at the health needs of that community. They assess the community, so they use different models to assess, to collect data, secondary data and primary data. It is a sustainable model, so it sits within our the Otago Polytechnic um, philosophy of sustainability. And it is an education model, so it sits within the pedagogy of learning and teaching. The CHASE model has six phases and as we progress over the years we are adapting and advancing on this CHASE model. It has been published in the Scope Journal in 2017. Following developing the CHASE model, which is the Community Health Assessment Sustainable Education model, um, we decided to include two other main four models or frameworks that help to collect data. The students who undertake community projects, they use the community as partner wheel by Anderson and McFarlane, and this includes eight subsystems. These subsystems are communication of the, uh, what, the communication available in the, in the um, community, the education in the community, recreation, health and social services, politics and government, transport and safety, the economics of the community, physical environment as well as the demographics of that community. As we've progressed we have included two additional subsystems making it now 10 subsystems which include looking at the housing and also about climate change. In addition to using Communities Partner Wheel, we also engage with the Ottawa Charter for Health with the six subsystems related to that and the students work through that when they have been able to um, assess the community and the, identify the health needs, the population that they are or the aggregate that they are working with and come up with significant health promotion message by using the Ottawa Charter and then they develop health promotion resources which are handed back to the community in order to um, improve health care. Thank you. Kia ora koutou katoa. Ko Matt Arthur te maunga. Ko Wairau Gorge te awa. Ko Restio toku Fano, Ko Poppy toku Ingoa. Tina koutou, tina koutou. Kia ora koutou katoa. Hello and welcome. My name is Poppy, a representative of the Community Research Group um, here in New Zealand. Thank you for braving the cold and joining us here tonight. I just presented you with my pepeha, an introduction of myself, wel a welcome to you, and an explanation of my ancestral roots, all in Māori, the indigenous language of New Zealand. The last sentence translates to greetings and welcome to you all as we gather as one in mind and spirit to present our work and share our thoughts. I hope this can underlay what we are doing today, gathering to discuss and share research, findings and resources about your wonderful community of Bishop's Castle. So, thank you again for being here. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kia ora koutou katoa. Before I begin, I would just like to thank the core team. The core team is made up of various representatives from your community who have helped us in a great amount. 
they've helped us with our research, they've given us their time. So thank you very much, all who are up on the board for um, everything that you've done for us. Um, this is us as a group. Um, we are a 12 year three Bachelor of Nursing students studying at Otago Polytechnic here in New Zealand. The community of Bishop's Castle. I'm not going to lecture you on your own community. You live there and you know about it more than any of us do. However, I would like to highlight some points of interest from our initial research. The fact that you guys are a tight-knit community has come through from the very start and the values of that tight-knit community have come through too. It was very interesting to look into your proud history and English heritage. The differences culturally and structurally between England and New Zealand have also posed um, interesting. For example, the government structure, the structure of your health system, how things are funded, they're all very different to what we have here in New Zealand. And it's something that we've taken a wee bit of time to get our head around, but um, it was important to um, understand these differences and get our thinking into your community mindset. Understanding Brexit, how that affects you as a community. Climate change and how you combat that as a community. Your, the layout of your community, um, where you're situated, how having borders affects um, your health. One thing for me personally, converting miles to kilometres, that is still something I'm struggling with to do in terms of like figuring out how you, that affects your health. What being a rural community is to you and how that um, affects your health. Um, what resources are available to you and what resources aren't available. All these things were covered by our research using the community wheel which Jean would have um, gone over before. This is our first stepping stone to understand, understanding what it's like to be in Bishop's Castle. We gathered primary and secondary data um, in our research. The primary data came from the core team which we, who we were emailing and Skyping throughout the last few weeks. The secondary data we collected online. From this data, um, we came together and um, collated a mind map, which you can see on the screen. The, the mind map consisted of potential gaps or health needs in your community and um, potential vulnerable populations that you have in your community too. From the mind map, we then narrowed down further to what three um, health needs we wanted to focus on for our literature review and potential health promotion message and health resource to develop at the end. These are the three broad topics that we came to in the end. Transport, mental health and physical health. We then split into three smaller groups to begin further research into these topics. I'm now going to hand over to three of my colleagues, one from each of the smaller groups, to go um, more in depth into the direction we took once we split into our groups. They're going to give you an overview of the rationale into why we chose this as a health need for your community, um, an overview of the literature that we found on the health need, the health promotion message that we developed using the Ottawa Charter, and the health resource that was made for each health need. So now I'm going to hand over to Sophie, who is going to start with transport. Hi, I'm Sophie. I was working with my group on the transport side of this project. Transport is a fundamental aspect of a community, providing access to many integral services which, while also offering a great deal of freedom to move around a given area. In a rural area, due to scarcity of some social services, transportation is of a particular importance. We identified public transport as an issue, as public transport does not cover the needs of the community. Buses only travel to nearby towns of Ludlow and Newton once per day, and council budget cuts continue to threaten transport to Shrewsbury. Another issue was disabled parking. The parking spots are inaccessible due to frequent misuse by non-permit holders. This is attributed to inconsistent markings, lack of signage, and the absence of any parking infringement enforced. Due to a high elderly population in Bishop's Castle, a higher than average portion of the, pub of the public could be afflicted with mobility issues, making those affected a large portion of the population. These issues have a major effect on health, as lack of pub public transport puts particular importance on vehicle access, therefore accessibility is only possible with sufficient parking. 
For the disabled, a lack of designated and available parking has a significant health impact. Without this resource, those with disabilities may not be able to utilise available social services, resulting in detachment and isolation from network, network of facilities. From our research, we have highlighted a trend between rural communities and transport poverty. Transport poverty is commonly associated with rural communities. There is not enough funding, resources or populations to drive the need for improved transport. Our research also highlighted two common minority groups, the elderly and the disabled. These minority groups are evident in Bishop's Castle in terms of transport and accessibility. The literature we reviewed further highlighted and reinforced the information and concerns that the core team of Bishop's Castle had already addressed. The Ottawa Charter is a health promotion framework which outlines the fundamental aspects needed for community health. We have used this model to identify health promotion opportunities within Bishop's Castle, the most important being raised awareness of correct use of disabled parking. From here, we moved on to our health promotion resource, a written submission to the Shropshire Council with three recommendations. Better signage and road marking of disabled parks, repercussions introduced for incorrect use, and increased education regarding why incorrect use is important. Attached to our submission was a flyer that we have developed to be placed on non-permitted cars using disabled parks. The aim of this is to provide targeted education about the importance of correct use with the aim to prevent incorrect use reoccurring. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm part of a group of four who have identified the health need of mental health for Bishop's Castle and I'm going to be presenting some of our findings. Uh, the rationale for this, so we came up with a broad question of how does living in a rural community contribute to a decline in mental health for different groups, being older, adults, young families, youth and minority groups. Uh, so we sort of came up with some ideas why this is relevant. It was being issues related to mental health and support are a significant challenge faced by rural communities. Every person has mental health. Mental health and wellness is an integral part of health. Rural communities often struggle with barriers such as inaccessibility to services and lack of funding. Bishop's Castle has had nine suicides within the last five years, which is significant for the population size of about 2,000. Bishop's Castle has limited mental health resources. There is only one cognitive behavioural therapy counsellor in Bishop's Castle, which is funded for four hours per week with a wait time of up to four months. Um, ultimately, there is no health without mental health. Mental health is important to the entire community. While our focus is on the whole community, we divided the community group into subgroups and research is issues relevant to these subgroups in the rural environment. So firstly, older adult. Uh, things that came up were with an ageing population in Bishop Castle and the vast land area that there is. Uh, residents are more likely to feel isolated and lonely. Social isolation can be defined as a lack of social interaction with family, friends and neighbours. Physical isolation can cause social and emotional isolation, leading into feelings of loneliness. Loneliness and isolation is a large contributor to depression and mental health and mental illness in the older person. Second group is youth. Uh, we found that so youth have a more active lifestyle. A research found that youth in rural areas had many feelings of boredom and loneliness. Many older teenagers said living rurally affected their mental health, particularly depression and anxiety. Mental health problems are a major burden for adolescents, with depression being the leading contributor to the global burden of disease in middle to high income countries. At the College of Bishops Castle, there is a school counsellor that is always available to chat, as well as a student support person. So the third group is young families. Uh, we looked specifically at the topic of perinatal depression disorder. So what we found there was that uh, PDD affects between 15 to 20% of women and their families who become pregnant globally and is typically underdiagnosed. It is characterised by feelings of inadequacy and failure, a sense of hopelessness, exhaustion, emptiness, anxiety or panic, decreased energy and motivation, and a general inability to cope with daily routines. Undiagnosed postpartum depression can mean a woman suffers months, sometimes years of illness. 
This is concerning given the potential effects PDD can have on the mother-infant relationship and the familial system. With regards to Bishop's Castle specifically, there is very little mental health support for postpartum depression and other mental health issues faced by families. In terms of the general practice, it is up to mothers to ask for help and there is no pregnancy care planners in the area. Midwifery is still providing support antenatally, but this is based 38 miles away. Uh, the last group is minority groups. A minority group is defined as a group of people who, because of their physical or cultural characteristics, are singled out from others in the society in which they live for differential and unequal treatment, and who therefore regard themselves as objects of collective discrimination. Main issues highlighted was uh, cultural sensitivity, language and communication barriers, and a lack of relatability. 1.5% of people in Bishop's Castle in 2011 would be classed as a racial minority. Researchers found an increased risk of experiencing mental health issues in gender non-conforming youth, as well as higher depression rates in sexual and gender minorities. Minority stress is a term that refers to the additional stress felt by minority groups, triggered by things such as racism, lack of social support, homophobic culture, discrimination, prejudice, and internalized stigma. So using the Ottawa Charter, we identified some health resources, as well as a health promotion message. The health promo promotion message is that there's no health without mental health. The resources we came up with, there's three. So the first one is a submission to Shropshire Clinical Commissioning Group requesting employment of a mental health nurse in Bishop's Castle and surrounding area, education for healthcare workers and the community, and uh, education on the sensory modulation techniques such as a stress ball. And then we've got two resources to go with that. So the first is a poster that has some links uh, to a text number and a call number, as well as a website with some useful information, as well as a stress ball that has the text number on it for people to use. Hello, my name is Lucy and I am speaking on behalf of the Physical Health Group. Physical Health is the third health need that we have identified for Bishop's Castle. We identified these as being key factors that impact physical health. Having a well-balanced diet and getting regular exercise is important. Food poverty leads to numerous health complaints. Maintaining good physical health is important to sustain well-being. There is a high prevalence of obesity in Bishop's Castle. Drug and alcohol misuse significantly impacts physical health and smoking was an issue that was expressed by the core team in Bishop's Castle. From this, we aim to identify incentives to better manage these issues. We researched the effect that diet, exercise and drug misuse have on physical health. For diet, we looked at the effect of Brexit and how this will impact on food prices and the lack of education around maintaining good food a good healthy diet. For exercise, we looked at physical activity of both youth and older adults in the UK. And for drug misuse, we looked at the short and long term effects that drug misuse have on physical health and the effectiveness of smoking, services and drug prevention education. From our findings in the literature review, it reinforced the concerns that were raised by the core team in Bishop's Castle. We use the Ottawa Charter Health Promotion Framework to identify an opportunity for health promotion. We found that education was needed around gardening and the benefits that community gardening have on maintaining good physical health. From here, we created resources, which is a beginner's guide to gardening. It explains the benefits of gardening and provides households with tips on growing their own produce. These resources are available as a poster, coaster and a magnet so that the message is available to all members of the community. I'm Natasha Gray and I have worked on the Sustainable UN Goals and I have related it to the community of Bishop's Castle. Um, so the United Nations developed 17 goals to attain a more sustainable future. These goals acknowledge the current global challenges including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, poor education, peace and justice. For these 17 sustainable development goals to be implemented by the target year 2030, they are all interconnected so no one is left behind. Goal 1, no poverty, end poverty in all its forms everywhere. 
Fortunately, there is no extreme poverty within the community of Bishop's Castle. With the town holding one of the main locations for business and employment in the southwest of Shropshire. In the 2011 census, it stated that 960 community members were economi economically active and 418 economically inactive, which included community members who were retired, students and members who were looking after family members at home or members who were disabled. Lastly, there were 28 who were unemployed. Overall, the community of Bishop's Castle is very tight-knit and close, where community members help each other out in times of need. Goal number three, good health and well-being. Access to quality essential healthcare services and access to safe, effective, quality and affordable essential medicines and vaccines for all. The community of Bishop's Castle has numerous health and social services available to them. There is the Bishop's Castle Medical Practice that provides 15-minute consultations with a GP and house call services if someone is, is too sick. The practice also has clinics through appointment that provide blood pressure, COPD and diabetes checks, childhood immunisations, counselling, family planning, phlebotomy services and minor surgeries. This service is fully funded for taxpayers, meaning that it is a free service, but prescriptions are not free. Goal number four, quality education. Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. In Bishop's Castle, there are two childcare centres, one primary school and one secondary school. There are 130 pupils enrolled in the primary school in Bishop's Castle, ranging from the age of 4 to 11, with most of the kids being from local families and only a few kids crossing the Welsh border to attend. The secondary school in Bishop's Castle has a roll of 445, with approximately a third of the students coming over from Wales, which is believed to be from the good reputation of the school. Goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. In the community of Bishop's Castle, there is a group called Fight the Plastic, which consists of 17 locals who aim to reduce single-use plastics, where they do a public rubbish collection and encourage volunteers from the community to help. Bishop's Castle was the first town in the Shropshire County to be, na to be named as a plastic-free community. The Fight the Plastic group has a monthly pop-up shop at the farmer's market in the town hall, where community members can ask for advice on being eco-friendly. Goal number 12, responsible consumption and production. Ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. The town of Bishop's Castle has a farmer market every third Saturday of the month, where local meat, breads, vegetables and fruits are sold. There is also a weekly vegetable box that locals can sub subscribe to. The vegetables provided are locally grown and affordable. And lastly, goal 16. Peace, justice and strong institutions. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. The community members of Bishop's Castle have stated that it is a very safe, genuine and trustworthy town. The town centre's lights go off at 2 o'clock in the morning and community members can walk down the main street without feeling like they are vulnerable or unsafe. The community members are more than willing to help each other out, even in the case of homelessness, where members will allow other community members to stay on their couch or spare bedroom so that they are not out on the street. At the completion of the proje projects, um, the students are encouraged to utilise the impact assessment research template to go back 
to the community, either physically or virtually, to ask the stakeholders what impact did the health promotion message, health promotion resources have on the health of the community. We have gathered data about this for the past 24 months and significant themes are coming uh, to our attention, mainly associated with the mental health of communities, of rural communities, and the stress of primary school children, which is particularly interesting and thought-provoking in our communities today. The other ones, of course, are climate change, which has significant health issues related to rural communities. Thank you.